Hello, it's James from X Robots. What's that? Another project with Colin Furs? That's right. This time, eBay have asked us to build something from the new Avengers Infinity War movie using parts only bought on eBay. So we've decided to build a giant Hulkbuster. Hulkbuster, Hulkbuster, busting all the things with his metal hands. That's right, with steel and hydraulics. And my job in this is going to be doing a bit of the CAD for the cosmetics, a little bit of 3D printing, but mainly building the electronic control system to control the whole thing. And that's going to look like this, which is basically going to be a thing with lots of joysticks and knobs and buttons in the top. And in the bottom is going to be the electronics and it actually hinges open to access the electronics and serves as the control panel as well. So we've got various joysticks to go in there, a lot of buttons which are basically from arcade machines, and that should allow us to have one central brain control system. So here's my top deck printed, I've got the 2020 attached with T-nuts to the 3D printed parts and I've got my joysticks, these are retro arcade joysticks with nice clicky buttons and these are attached into 3D printed things and of course I can move those around on the rails and reconfigure them if I want to but for now we're going to have two joysticks on the outside here and these two are going to sit here, we've got a big analogue joystick in the middle and some buttons here and of course this needs to be put on the bottom deck so we can put the electronics in. Colin Furs, <laughs> what do you think of this? <laughs> that is awesome. That is pretty cool. Right, James, you made a fantastic right, job. So, yeah, this is uh, going to be the central control panel and the main brain for the electronics. So, the plan is going to be that we've got basically legs up and legs down. Right. And if we want to make one leg shorter or longer so that it can do that a little bit, that'll be sideways. Then on the other side, we've got rotating the waist. Shh, that'll do that motion. Right. And that'll just set it to a position and leave it there. Oh, I see. So, this is not one leg each. No. That's legs up, so legs down. And then and if you want that one sets them to the same position. And then yeah. that'll be for arms. So, that'll be arms out. Right. And then the elbows. Cool. Okay, and then basically this joystick is your master joystick, which mixes some of those together. Right. So once you set the positions, you can have like several different modes that yeah. mix things. So you can mix the arms together. Yeah. Just by moving that, which would move the arms together. Right. Or however, in each different mode. And we could also have a mode to mix the legs in, so you could do different, different things. Stuff. So you just have to sit there wiggling one joystick. And then, oh, hell, all break loose. And it will all do things. So it's easy to puppeteer without having to go, oh no, which one is it? But then halfway through you could say, well actually I'm going to crouch down a little bit and then do the same thing. Uh, and we can also have fixed positions for poses programmed in, so you can just hit one button and it can go yeah. and <laughs> So probably for safety you'll press one of those red buttons and fire. Yeah. That'll be one arm, the other one will be the other arm. Cool. So there we go. I just, you just need something for it to control then. All right, Colin Furs, what have we got here? Well then, James Broughton, we've got what appears to be a foot. So this is a foot. And half a leg. Half a leg. And then this is going to be the top half. All right, and we've got hydraulics here, powered by electrics, which are like tail lift electrics. So for 12 volt battery, it's in the back. And we've got a nice pendant that I've got to hack into yes. to control. And it so, does work if you push the buttons. So... Sounds cool, doesn't it? It's too heavy, can't lift it. But they are pretty pleased with it, it's solid. So that much so, is this way then, we reckon 100 kilograms so far, half a leg? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. All right, it's gonna be 150, once we've got the top bit on at least. Stick it in the back of your car, yeah? Yeah, put one in your car, one in my car. <laughs> and the roof, the uh, drive both cars side by side and put the body on the top. But you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty colossal piece of engineering. Thrashing all my tools to the limit. 
Everything's on the edge. So that's looking pretty good so far. It's going to be really big, but Colin doesn't live that nearby me and we both need to work on parts together. So I'm going to make a virtual Hulk Buster. So I've drawn both legs that Colin's going to build in Fusion 360 and I've put all the joints in here so we can actually activate those parallelogram legs by grabbing the handles here and making it bent down. And that seems to work pretty well. There's also a waist joint at the top here which allows the top of the body to turn and that's going to sit on some sort of bearing that Colin has yet to source. And once he's built the top, we'll draw that as well, and then I can plan all the other parts that fit on here. If I tick some boxes over here, we can see all the panels coming to life for the Avengers Infinity War Hulkbuster. All of these panels need to be made out of rolled steel, so they can only bend in one direction, although some of the parts are going to be 3D printed, but we'll come back to more of that later. Yeah, so I need to buy some Arduinos and some other components on eBay. I put some electronics in my control panel. All my switches got wired in. I'm using an Arduino Mega with a shield here to take all the I.O. and there's lots of digital and analog I.O. on that board. We've got a Max 485 chip here, which is basically an RS-485 line driver. And I'm using an RJ45 breakout here to chain the module to all of the other modules in the suit. And that includes, among other things, these modules, which we place the hydraulic handsets on that control those hydraulic units. And there's going to be four of those in the suit to control each leg and each arm. Each one has another Arduino Mega in, and it also has the other half of the serial line driver. So this allows data, serial data, to go over long distances up to 1.2 kilometers reliably. This is a Max 485 module. We've again got the breakout there for the RJ45s and I'm going to use normal network cables to chain these together, a voltage regulator. We've also got some ULN 2803s here and those drive a whole bunch of relays which will replace the buttons in the handsets or at least bridge over them to control them with this but still give us the buttons on top for manual control. And of course we've got some emergency stop buttons. So these units of course just plug together with normal network cables there, it's just normal Cat5 cables, although it's not actually Ethernet, it's serial over twisted pairs, and these of course have lots of twisted pairs in, so I'm just using one twisted pair there. And of course there's lots of sockets on all the items, so we can plug in multiple modules to any of them, and they should all work on one common serial bus. So we need to write some code to go on here, so the control panel actually switches the relays appropriately, and we also need position feedback from each joint, which is going to come into these modules. So that means we can take this control panel and put it anywhere on one long cable. We don't need to get any data back to here in terms of feedback. There's one more module I want to make in this episode, and that's going to be the Unibeam. The Unibeam is going to be made of loads of these 10 watt LEDs and there's seven of them and they're really bright and those are going to be attached to some 2020 extrusion eventually. And that's attached to this plastic thing and in the back of there goes a driver which can handle the current for seven amps basically. That whole thing fits in this bezel which then mounts onto the front of the suit of course in the chest plate. And we've also got this control box which is going to have a battery in it, an Arduino Pro Mini, a power supply and it's got also the RJ45 breakout and the Max 485 line driver. So this is the module that sits on the serial bus and controls the driver that's back in my Unibeam. Colin Furs! Nice legs! Alright, so we've got the control system here. So these are now the new modules that we put the handsets on for those hydraulic controllers. And then we've got some LEDs in here, you can just about see. So when I push these, you should see pairs of relays coming on, which basically are going to press the buttons that send the hydraulics up and down. So we've got our arm up and down on each side. So we've got one side of the machine and the other side, and that's the, the other axis. And then we've got, for the moment, link up and down. You spent some money on relays, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> when yeah. you said you needed a few relays, I thought you might like four yeah, or something. There's like a pair, there's 32, so there's a pair for each button, and we've got a spare handset at the moment, which may or may not get used, but we've got a capacity. And we've got yeah. emergency stops, so you can which we might need. But we've got the Unibeam. So if you press this blue button. Yeah. You can get a suntan. Yeah, it's quite bright, it leaves dots on your eyes. Can't see now. 
Right, so I've hacked into the handset there, so I've got the uh, wires here with a connector so we can remove this and take it away. Obviously the handsets will sit on these units. We've got our emergency stop that takes the positive wire and breaks it so neither the pump or the solenoids work. And obviously this will then control the legs up and down. There we go. And we're down, we're pushing the roof off my chest. Yeah, I'll just finish my biscuit bit, it's very rude if you can't. Quite a reaction though, isn't it? We've also got these 3D printed plates for position feedback, and those have got a potentiometer mounted on. And this is the old string and a pulley trick. So we've got a pulley that rotates with the stationary piece of the leg, a piece that's stationary with the top of the leg as it goes up. So this plate rotates around the big pulley and a string with roughly a two to one ratio. So the big pulley turns 60 degrees. That gives me 120 on the pot to get better resolution. And then the answers come out here that go to the control system so we can do position control of the legs. Right, let's talk about those cosmetics again. So this is the main look and feel of Hulkbuster. Obviously there'll be two legs. We've just got one there exposed so we can see the mechanics inside. And most of these panels I've made in uh, two mil thick material and these are going to be plasma cut by Colin, rolled and put back on. But that involves basically taking this CAD and unrolling these sections so that we can actually get flat templates to cut out. Now I do have a meaner looking helmet design, most of that's going to be 3D printed though. So I'm using Pepecura Designer version 4 to unfold all of these parts. So I've split them all up and exported STLs, put them in Pepecura Designer, there's one of my panels there, and basically then we can use the unfold feature here to make flat templates. But as you can see, um, it's a bit of a nightmare in fact, it's a bit like a child's peeled an orange and get all the smallest pieces of skin possible and spread them all over the page. Obviously we've got two sides to this, an inside and outside and all the edges we don't need, so we need to do some manual work in Pepecura Designer, defining the edges and defining where there are and aren't cuts to try and get something that looks sensible. So I endeavoured to design the parts so that the panels only bent in one direction because we can only roll steel in one direction, but obviously that's not quite the case for this one, so there's loads of cuts in this to try and do the compound bends. But I've gone through this and defined the edges and used disjoined faces and joined faces to try and make a piece, a template there we can at least um, try and trace around and that should give us the main uh, look and feel for that template. So I've then exported that as a DXF, put that back into Fusion 360 and then gone and traced around every one to make sure we've got unbroken constant lines and this will allow the plasma cutter to cut them cleanly and then we can cut those out of steel, bend them back into shape and hopefully put the whole thing together. Colin also asked me to make extra templates so we can map those radiuses correctly so the every corner here of the parts I've gone and basically drawn a sketch inside that matches the profile so those can be potentially cut out and used to get the bend right in all the pieces. Yeah, it's pepper cure with steel. So hopefully Collins guys can get that steel to go into shape. And don't forget to check out Collins channel for more on the mechanical build. Thanks again to eBay for making it possible to build this Avengers Infinity War Hulkbuster. And don't forget to check back next time for more of a build, including 3D printing that helmet.